call this meeting of the Jacksonville City Council to order. I want to welcome everyone who's in attendance tonight. Uh, got a crowd here tonight. And also those that are watching the uh, uh, meeting on G10 television. Thank you for tuning in. We're going to start tonight again uh, like we usually do with our uh, Pledge of Allegiance be being led by Council Member Jerome Willingham, followed by the invocation by our City Attorney John Carter. Please rise. <coughs> I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Our Heavenly Father, we give you thanks. We give you thanks for this beautiful day that you so graciously have bestowed upon us and that we all were able, hopefully, to enjoy. We give thanks for our mayor and our council and for their deliberations on our budget through another physical year that looks challenging with uncertainties. We pray that each of us individually and corporately as the city of Jacksonville are always good citizens and stewards in reference to the blessings and the bounty you so graciously have bestowed upon us. We pray for our military members serving us here and around the world, for their safety and their anxious families. And as always, continue to give guidance and direction to our mayor and to our council. All this we ask in your holy name. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> council, each of you have had a opportunity to review the proposed agenda for tonight's meeting. I would entertain a motion to adopt the agenda. So moved. Second. I have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carries. We're going to do some proclamations and some presentations now. So I'm going to come around front. <clears throat> The first uh, proclamation I'd like to make tonight is on behalf of the National Motorcycle Safety Awareness Month, and we would like to ask Marguerite Crawford and members of the Leather and Lace Motorcycle Club that are present, if you would come forward and join me. The goal of Motorcycle Safety Awareness Month is to encourage all motorists, both vehicular and cyclists, to share the road uh, safely and to make the uh, conscious effort to drive fully engaged and undistracted. I have a, a proclamation that has been prepared in recognition of Motorcycle Safety Awareness Month that I'd like to read at this time. <clears throat> Motor, uh, whereas Motorcycle Safety Awareness Month raises public awareness for a lifetime of safe motorcycle riding, and whereas North Carolina's climate and scenery makes motorcycle riding an attraction throughout the beautiful state of North Carolina, and riders consider our roadways to be some of the best for riding, and whereas motorcycles are increasingly used as a, result, a regular means of transportation, they are an energy efficient vehicle that reduces fuel consumption, traffic and parking congestion. And whereas the motorcycle is an important form of transportation for commuting, touring and recreation. And whereas to prevent injuries and deaths on North Carolina's roadways, motorcyclists and motorists must be vigilant in their efforts to share the road and ensure safety of everyone. And whereas the International Women's Motorcycle Club Leather and Lace Motorcycle Club is committed to increasing the safe operation of motorcycles by promoting rider safety education programs. Their goal is to alert the motorists of Onslow County in North Carolina to share the road. Now therefore I, Sammy Phillips, the mayor of the city of Jacksonville, do hereby proudly proclaim uh, the, the month of May as Motorcycle Awareness Month in the city of Jacksonville and ask all citizens to join Leather and Lace Motorcycle Club in a concerted effort to promote awareness 
mutual respect and safety on the road on our roads and i will present this to you like to say thank you. This is not just for leather and lace, it's for all motorcyclists in Onzo County and Jacksonville, city of Jacksonville. Please join us on May 9th, or excuse me, yes, May 9th for our scavenger hunt, which we are, um, our community service is to help peers in um, raising money for them. Thank you again. Next, we'd like to uh, recognize uh, this week is Small Business Appreciation Week. And I have some special guests that are here that I'd like to ask to come join me now. We have one of our Onslow County Commissioners, my, my favorite commissioner, I don't mind telling you that. <laughs> Ms. Millionaire Williams, nice to see you. Okay. We have Ms. Lorette Lagon who's with the Jacksonville Onslow Chamber of Commerce, Tina Glover with State Farm Insurance, the Tina Glover Agency, <laughs> and Shaw with Coastal Carolina Community College, and Sandra Watkins, Watkins with First Citizens Bank. Thank you ladies for joining us tonight, I appreciate it. Uh, and in recognition of the valuable contribution of small business to the economic and social growth and development of the city of Jacksonville, the Jacksonville Onslow Chamber of Commerce has requested this proclamation, which we are gladly to provide, okay? Whereas small businesses play an important role in the economic base for all communities by generating jobs for their residents, and whereas there are many small businesses in Jacksonville and the number is increasing rapidly each year, and whereas Coastal Carolina Community College has a strong link with the Jacksonville Onslow Chamber of Commerce in order to assist the small business community in Onslow County. And whereas the city of Jacksonville is proud of the commitment of these organizations to assist small business with their needs and help with the startup of our new businesses. And whereas events are planned all week to recognize the contributions that small businesses have on the city, including the kickoff luncheon in which Duke Energy uh, Citizenship and Service Award will be presented on Monday, May 11th, 2015, and concluding with the Small Business Appreciation Breakfast, featuring the presentation of the First Citizens Bank Small Business Person of the Year, that award, on Friday, May 15th, 2015. So now, therefore, I, Sammy Phillips, the Mayor of the City of Jacksonville, do hereby proudly proclaim uh, May 11th through May 15th of 2015, Small Business Appreciation Week in the city of Jacksonville in recognition of the important role small businesses have in our society and to salute the men and women whose in ingenuity, integrity, and innovative spirit contributes to the free enterprise society in which the American economy was founded. And I will present you with this proclamation you so and give you the opportunity to speak. This is the 27th, 26th year that the Chamber has celebrated with our partners, with uh, First Citizens, our partners at the Community College, to honor the small businesses in our community. They are truly the backbone. Thank you. And thank you very much. On behalf of the Small Business Committee, uh, I want to thank you for, the for serving us with the proclamation. In addition uh, to the activities already mentioned, we also have uh, two seminars um, as well for small business owners. Please visit the website, the Chamber's website, or call the Chamber for information. Thank you, Ann Shaw, very much, for and Coastal Carolina Community College for that. So on behalf of small businesses and the Small Business Committee, thank you very much. Well, officially, on behalf of Coastal, I, this short people need to lower the microphone. 
So on behalf of Coastal Carolina Community College and the Small Business Center, we're just very appreciative to the city, to our council members and the, the staff at the city for helping us to recognize the very innovative, hardworking people who put it on the line every day in operating their small businesses. Thank you so much. Citizens Bank has a big part of this thing. And you know that I don't even need this microphone, Sammy, but it's such a pleasure to be here and to be part, <clears throat> excuse me, of the Small Business Week. And I just feel honored and humbled to take part in this on behalf of First Citizens Bank and just supporting the lifeblood of not only this community, but every community throughout the United States. So again, it's just an honor and I appreciate all you do to support that. Thank you so much. Well, thank, thank you, ladies, very much for coming and joining us tonight to, to allow us to present this. It's a pleasure. My pleasure. Thank you. My pleasure. All righty, sir. I, I know you. Thank you, Next, we're going to recognize Mental Health Month, and I would like to ask Kate Murphy to join me up front. Kate is with, uh, she's the member communication specialist with Coastal Care. And thank you again for coming and being with us again, Kate. Yes. Uh, in, recognition, in recognition of Mental Health uh, Month, Coastal Care, which is a local agency, I think you're based out of Wilmington, right? And Jacksonville. And Jacksonville. Uh, that provides access and oversight of services uh, for mental health in five coastal counties, including Onslow. And I want to present a proclamation to you, if you'll bear with me with, on this. Okay. That light just reflects right perfectly <laughs> down here and, and, and blinds me. But anyway, whereas mental health is essential to everyone's over, uh, overall physical health and emotional well being, regardless of age, race, ethnicity, religion, or economic status. And whereas the stigma surrounding mental health illness can prevent people from seeking the medical attention they need. However, people who have mental illness do recover and lead full productive lives. And whereas an estimated two thirds of adults and young people who have mental health disorders are not receiving the help they need and nearly 30,000 American lives are lost each year to suicide and mental illnesses. And whereas the cost of untreated and mistreated mental illness and addictive disorders to American businesses, governments, and families has grown to over $100 billion annually. And whereas Coastal Care has educated more than 540 crisis intervention team members and more than 120 citizens in mental health first aid and is committed to increasing education and awareness to eliminate stigma to, uh, the stigma. And whereas Mental Health Month is observed nationwide in May and each business, school, government agency, health care provider, organization and, and resident can contribute to mental health, to the mental health of our communities by promoting mental health wellness and supporting prevention effort. Now therefore I, Sammy Phillips, the mayor of the city of Jacksonville, do hereby proudly proclaim May of 2015 as Mental Health Month in the city of Jacksonville and I encourage all citizens to recommit to increasing awareness and understanding of mental illness and the need for accessible services for all people who live with mental disorders. And I will present this to you, Kate. Thank you so much, Mayor, and to the Council, not only for this proclamation, but just uh, the warmth and welcome that I always feel when I have the opportunity to attend. I really enjoy these meetings and, and the presence that we have um, here in Jacksonville and the relationships that we have. Coastal Care last year received over 26,000 phone calls to our call center for accessing services and, and crisis services uh, and um, have served um, a, 
a little more than 5,000 unique individuals in, in this area, in this community. So there is a need um, out there that we are working hard to meet and continue to strive to do so. We uh, heard that the stigma often is a huge barrier and obstacle for individuals seeking assistance. One in four of us will experience a mental health uh, condition this year. Um, and it's hard to ask for that help. So for Mental Health Month this year, Coastal Care is doing a number of educational activ activities and really focusing on some early intervention. We kicked off the month with a health expo at Jacksonville Mall um, on May 2nd, and on May 16th we'll host a youth mental health first aid training where individuals who work with young people can learn about typical adolescent development and then when some warning signs are popping up and how to work with an individual on a first aid basis. It's not not out of any of our hands to be sort of that that uh, support for someone. So I, I appreciate the, po the proclamation so much and um, it's become a bit of a tradition for me to outfit you and the council with our green awareness ribbons and if it's okay with you I'd like to do that again. Absolutely. Thank you, thank you. See if anybody else wants some. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks a lot, Kate. Appreciate, appreciate you coming. Uh, Chief, if you want to join me up, we're going to uh, talk about Police Week. Oh, bring them on. Yes, yeah, sir. Bring them on up. How's it going? See, a short person's been using my microphone. <laughs> All right. During the week of uh, May 10th through the 16th, we pay tribute to the police officers of our community and the role they play in protecting us. On May 13th at 10 o'clock a.m., a peace officer's memorial observance will be uh, held at the Memorial Garden at, uh, at Jacksonville Commons in recognition of those officers who gave uh, their lives in the line of service. And uh, I would love to share with you this proclamation that we have prepared. Uh, whereas the Congress and President of the United States have designated the 15th day of May as Peace Officers Memorial Day and the week in which it falls is Police Week. And whereas every day public safety officers work tirelessly to protect our citizens, enforce our laws, and keep our neighborhoods safe. They report for duty knowing full well the dangers they face and the sacrifices they may be called upon to make. And whereas this week we pay tribute to the thousands of men and women who serve us with extraordinary bravery and we remember the heroes who have laid down their lives in pursuit of a safer, more just society. And whereas the members of the Jacksonville Police Department play an essential role in safeguarding the rights and freedom of, freedoms of the citizens of Jacksonville. And whereas it is important that all citizens know and understand the problems, duties, and responsibilities of their police department and that members of our police department recognize their duty to serve the people by safeguarding life and property, by protecting them against violence or disorder, and by protecting the innocent against deception and the weak against oppression or intimidation. Now, therefore, I, Sammy Phillips, the mayor of the city of Jacksonville, do hereby proudly proclaim the week of May 10th through 16th, 2015, as Police Week in the city of Jacksonville. And I urge all citizens to recognize 
the police officers of our community and country, and country whose devotion to duty brings safety to all that they serve. Chief, I'm going to present this to you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Mayor. I appreciate this proclamation. I know the police officers of our organization do as well. You know, one of the things that you talked about is sacrifice, and I don't have to tell you about sacrifice over the 30 years that you were with the Jacksonville Police Department. The missed birthdays, the missed holidays, um, you know, staying up all night, working 24, 48 hours straight on calls. So, you know, it's, it's a lot of sacrifice, and I think it's so important for the community to recognize that, and our community does recognize that. Over the last several months, the incidents in our nation have drawn a lot of attention to police, uh, police departments across the country. And I'm surprised uh, how many citizens in our community have, have told us how much they appreciate that. And, you know, we live in a great community, and it, it's, it's, it's really great for us to recognize that uh, our, our citizens to recognize those police officers for the sacrifice. Uh, I'd like to invite everyone out on the 13th at 10 o'clock. The mayor will be speaking um, for the memorial services for those officers who gave the ultimate sacrifice in our community. So thank you very much, Mayor. It's almost, uh, it's almost uh, ironic that the, both the officers that lost their lives while in the line of duty uh, that worked for the Jacksonville Police Department died in May. So, uh, special tribute to them. <clears throat> Last but not least for tonight, we want to uh, recognize Building Safety Month. And I'd ask Daryl Daryl, if you'll come up and help me here. Daryl's plans examiner with the city of Jacksonville uh, in the developmental services department. And thanks, Daryl, for coming out tonight. And the city of Jacksonville is proud to recognize the critical role played by our building code inspectors and for their continued commitment to our community by proclaiming the month of May 2015 as Building Safety Month in the city of Jacksonville. And there's going to be several activities that will be held, uh, including fire inspections in conjunction with the fire department. So a lot of things are going to happen this month, right? But I'm going to share with everybody a proclamation that we've prepared just for this month, right? Whereas our city is continuing efforts to address the critical issues of safety, energy efficiency, water conservation, and resilience in the building environment that affect our citizens, both in everyday life and in times of natural disaster, give us confidence that our structures are safe and sound. And whereas our confidence is achieved through the devotion of vigilant guardians, building safety and fire, mar uh, fire prevention officials, architects, engineers, builders, tradespeople, laborers, and others in the construction in industry who work year round to ensure the safe construction of buildings. And whereas Building Safety Month is sponsored by the International Code Council to remind the public about the critical role of our community's largely unknown guardians of public safety, our local code officials, who assure us of safe, efficient, and livable buildings. And whereas resilient communities start with building codes, the theme for Building Safety Month 2015 encourages all Americans to raise awareness of the importance of building safety and resilient construction, fire prevention, disaster mitigation, water safety and conservation, energy efficiency, and new technologies in the construction in industry. And whereas each year, in observance of the Building Safety Month, Americans are asked to consider projects to improve public safety or building safety, excuse me, and sustainability at home and in the community 
and to acknowledge the essential service provided to all of us by local and state building departments and federal agencies in protecting lives and property. Now, therefore, I, Sammy Phillips, Mayor of the City of Jacksonville, do hereby proudly proclaim the month of May 2015 as Building Safety Month in the City of Jacksonville, and I encourage our citizens to learn more about how they can contribute to building safety at home and in our community by contacting the Jacksonville Building Inspections Department. And I would appreciate you coming tonight. Thank you. Thank you. Well, you want to speak to this as far as for myself, the Department of Developmental Services, the City of Jacksonville Fire Department, we'd like to thank you guys. We actually don't want to be known or seen as far as the whole. Um, hopefully we will never have a problem with the building, so you guys have to see us. Thank you guys again. All right, while well, I still have a captive audience, I'll go to the first section of public comment for the evening. Is there anyone present that wishes to speak at public comment that may not have had opportunity to sign the sheet? If so, raise your hand. All right. Uh, we're going to take just a little time out here. And uh, I know some of you came sp uh, solely for the uh, presentations tonight, and you don't want to watch the sausage being made, I understand. Okay, <laughs> this would be a good opportunity to leave. But you're welcome to stay. Don't know why you'd want to, but you're welcome to stay. All right, Council, let's uh, go ahead and uh, proceed. Here we have um, <coughs> we have the adoption of the consent items and the minutes. Uh, we have an April 7th, 2015 special workshop meeting, April 7th, 2015 regular meeting, April 14th, 2015 meeting, and also on the uh, adoption of the consent items, uh, we needed to add uh, the resolution of support for Campus Zoom Railway study to that uh, consent item. And uh, also, well, that'll, that'll work. Mayor, Mr. Mayor, Mayor, I would move that the adoption of the consent items and the minutes as noted on the agenda as amended with the resolution on the rail study be, uh, be adopted, be approved. Second. We have a motion and a second. Is there any other comment? Hearing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed? Okay. The first item here that we're going to go to is the budget hearing. And uh, this is for the proposed fiscal year 2014 2015. That's a typo. This is 15 16 budget. <laughs> yes. Okay. So we want to go with, we're going to do the 2015-2016 budget this time. So Dr. Woodruff, you'll be presenting this item. Good evening, Mayor, members of City Council. This evening is the public hearing for your proposed budget for next year. Fiscal year begins July 1, goes through June 30th. By state law, you're required to adopt a budget no later than June 30th of this year for next fiscal year. Over the last month, you have met in workshops on numerous occasions as shown on the screen. 
Approximately 20 hours of work have been put in by you listening to the staff and asking questions regarding the staff relative to the proposed budget. Tonight is the public hearing where the public may come and make comments about any portion or things they feel should be added to the budget. Also this evening, if you are prepared at a future time this evening, you can adopt the budget or at your next meeting in May or at any meeting in June. The revenue forecast for FY16 shows property taxes at just at $23 million, sales tax at roughly $10.5 million, solid waste fees and transfer fees totaling approximately $5.8 million, stormwater fees at approximately $2.9 million, and water and sewer fees at roughly $21.5 million. The proposed budget for this year for FY16 calls for the general fund to be $46.11 million, the water and sewer fund to be $29.32 million, stormwater fees to be $2.93 million, and solid waste fees of roughly $6.21 million. The current tax rate of 64.2 would remain in effect. There is no request for a tax increase. Your four cents for capital projects will continue. Your designation of 3.84 cents for the Public Safety Center will continue. That leaves 56.36 cents to operate the general fund. The authorized positions are a total of 50, I'm sorry, are 555. That is a reduction of 10 full-time authorized positions from the previous year. The expenditures again are shown and the budget has been put together on these assumptions. No change to sales tax distribution, no change in the current property tax rate of 64.2, which was established last year, no change to the water and sewer rates, no change to the solid waste fees, no change to stormwater fees, and a general fund balance use for the general fund of approximately 1.8 million. Also, health insurance, we will be absorbing any increase using funds from our current health insurance fund balance with only minor change plan, plan with only minor plan changes, one of which we discussed with you this evening in workshop. Fuel, we have reduced this in this budget from the $3.50 level last year to $3.15 for unleaded and from the $3.90 level for diesel to $3.45. Again, personnel, 555 full-time, 53 part-time, and a total of 608. Mayor and Council, we would now welcome you to open the public hearing. Thank you, Dr. Witter. At this time, I'm gonna recess the regular council meeting and open a public hearing on the budget. I don't have anyone signed up, but if you wish to speak regarding the fiscal year 2015-2016 budget, please feel free to raise your hand and uh, make necessary comments. Okay, I don't see anyone uh, expressing an interest, so at this time I'm going to close the public hearing on this matter. Okay. So now we're going to go to the next item. Get it up here. And this is the 2015-2016 annual action plan. Lily, uh, or I'm sorry, Tracy's, Tracy Johnson is going to, uh, Tracy Jackson is going to, um, I'll get it right, Tracy, eventually. Tracy Jackson uh, from Community Development is going to handle uh, pres presenting this item. So, Tracy. Good evening, Mayor and City Council members. Before you tonight for your review and approval is the annual action plan for fiscal year 2016. The annual action plan is a planning guide which outlines budget and activities for the use of Community Development Block Grant Funds, or CDBG, for the fiscal year 2016. HUD mandates adoption and submission of the action plan prior to releasing CDBG funds. 
which are used to benefit low to moderate income households. The plan provides an annual budget to carry out activities in the five-year plan. It also describes and measures the activities funded by CDBG. HUD has three goals, which provide decent housing, such as down payment assistance, suitable living environment by providing bus shelters and sidewalks, and demolition and clearance, and expand economic development by providing loans to small businesses. HUD also has three primary objectives, which are to assist low to moderate income household. For example, in Jacksonville, a family of three earning 36,600 or less could qualify for our programs. Other objectives include eliminating slum and blight, or addressing an urgent need such as a natural disaster. Citizen participation is also used to prepare the plan. And in January, we had a well-attended community input meeting at the Jack Emiat Recreation Center. Also here at City Hall, we had a funding opportunity workshop for nonprofits to learn to access CDBG funds. A review committee of staff and the Community Development Advisory Committee reviewed nonprofits' applications for funding. Also, from March 23rd to April 20th was our 30 day public comment period. And tonight we have the public hearing for final comments before submitting the plan to HUD by <coughs> May 15th. As shown historically, funding has decreased, and this year's funding is a 5.5% decrease from last year. The new budget is estimated to be 517,000. This amount consists of entitlement funds of 345,000 and program income of 100, 171,000. Program income comes from loan repayments. Although we receive this resource, community needs continue to exceed funding. Here shown are activities we normally address in communities. This year we have a new activity in which we are partnering with Recreation and Park, Parks to install a splash pad at the Jack Emiette Recreation Center. All activities are eligible within the city limits, and we are focusing in target areas such as downtown near Court Street and recently in New River. We recommend City Council approve and adopt the annual action plan for submittal to HUD by May 15th if there are no questions. Council, any Thank questions you. of Ms. Jackson? Thank you, Tracy. Thank you. If I could, I'd like to make just a couple of comments. Uh, we're very pleased to tell you that uh, with the removal of two houses last week, you have now, through community development, with assistance from your street department, removed 41 vacant and dilapidated houses in the last four years. Great there job. are currently 14 additional units, which the city council authorized the purchase of in the Fairwind apartments. Fair Wind apartments, which will begin the removal of asbestos over the next 30 days, with the anticipation that over the summer, the street department will periodically remove one duplex at a time. We also have three single family homes that are currently in the pipeline for removal under slum and blight. I'm also very pleased to tell you that we have a home under construction on Court Street at 310 Court Street that is part of their home ownership program, and that we have three additional persons who have now qualified for homes that will be built on the Newberry, in the Newberry Street area. So well done, Tracy and Lily and Reggie. Thank you. Well done. Thank you. All right, Council, we're going to uh, recess the regular council meeting and open up the required public hearing on this matter for the 2015-16 annual action plan. Is there anyone present that wishes to speak on this matter? So indicate by raising your hand. 
seeing no one, I'm going to close the public hearing. Council, you're being asked to adopt the uh, action annual action plan. Mayor Phillips, I move that we adopt and approve the submission of the 2015-2016 annual action plan to the U.S. Department of Housing and Urban Development as presented. Second. I have a motion and a second. Mm -hmm. Discussion? Hearing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. All opposed? Motion carries. Brings us to agenda item number six for the evening. This is the fiscal year 2016 budget adoption. Dr. Woodruff will be presenting this item. Months ago, you held a public hearing relative to your budget. Some of the slides which I will show you are a repeat. Your budget, as currently prepared, has this revenue forecast. The proposed revenue for the general fund, water and sewer, stormwater fees, and solid waste are shown. The current tax rate is proposed if you adopt this budget at 64.2 cents, which is not a change and you can see the way it will be distributed. These are your authorized positions for the coming year that are full time. These are your categories of expenditures as shown in your budget workshops. This is your proposed budget relative to no change in sales tax, tax rate, water sewer rate, solid waste fees rate, and stormwater fees and use of general fund. And these again are of your overall personnel full-time and part-time. An action this evening would also include the adoption of your capital improvement program as we have discussed it with you. At this time, I would open it to any discussion or questions that you may have on your proposed budget. Council? Look there. If I could get a figure as to the contingency fund, what is the amount for the contingency fund? Gail does not let me do math in public, <laughs> so I'm going to ask Gail Mays, the finance director, to come up. I'm assuming that you're actually asking on the what we'll call the unrestricted general fund balance, which is the no, cash. The co contingency fund. I'm sorry, the contingency fund. We in, do have a contingency fund in the general fund of $200,000, and then there's also $200,000 in the water sewer fund. And there are contingency funds in some of the other funds we have as well? Um, not specifically contingencies. A few of the departments have unanticipated money. Okay. Um, for money. example, finance has some if we have a vacancy to hire a temp. Okay, my point, my point is that the manager provided us some figures a while back at my request indicating, which I raised at a workshop meeting as to the breakdown of city salaries for employees and so on, the average, the median, and so on. Uh, my purpose was to gather information as to what it would take to provide the employees with a salary increase for this forthcoming budget. And my rough calculations, and I thought it could come out of contingency, was that it would cost the general fund approximately $190,000 based on the employee count I have and the average salary to provide a 1% salary increase and probably 30000 more for the other employees in the other funds. However, the authorization of the council would approve, I'm looking for the authorization for them to give the manager the authorization to come up with the necessary funds in the existing budget to pay for this salary adjustment. And I guess the question is why? Well, we went through some figures in terms of cost of living being a little over 6%, six percent, six tenths of a percent for uh, the fiscal year ending January. I'm aware that the county commissioners are considering a 1% salary increase for their employees and on WASA, 2.5% for their employees. Um, I think over the last two years, the city has been through some uh, strenuous budget <coughs> times beginning with the loss of some $2 million 
in sales tax revenue, and in his current year, what, 750000 in business privilege tax. We've been able to cope with those primarily through the extra efforts of our employees who have cooperated with management in terms of learning to do more with less by belt tightening, some early retirements, and some uh, positions lost due to attrition and others not being filled. Uh, we've asked employees to do more with less. And I think that's justification to provide some measure of salary increase. And I would propose that included with the budget adoption, the manager began to give the authority to appropriate the necessary funds from existing sources for a 1% salary increase for all employees uh, who've been on board since January 1, 2015, effective the first pay period in July 2015. Are you going to add that to a motion to adopt the budget? Or is that going to go? That, I, I was, that was my intent, yes. I would include that as my motion to adopt the budget as presented by the manager. Let me clarify one, one point. Uh, I believe I understand your logic on the January 1st date because uh, we would not want someone who is still on probation. Correct. So your intent is that if the employee, if the employee is in the, or was in the employment of the city <clears throat> at the beginning of this calendar year, July, I'm sorry, January 1, those would be the employees that would be eligible but if you are a new employee who has been employed by the city in the last, let's just say, last half of this current fiscal year, those employees would not have the raise. Is that your intent, that, sir? That's my intent. Okay, thank you for the clarification. I'll second that. Now, are you going to include the fee schedule in that motion? Yes. And everything? And the amended CIP. Pardon? The amended CIP. And the amended CIP. Are you going to include those in your Yeah, I, I was I would so including so the please. budget as presented by the manager, including the fee schedule, capital improvements, and so on. Second. We have a motion and a second. Discussion? Hearing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed? Aye. Aye. Is that one or two? Two. Okay. Motion carries. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Woodruff. Great job uh, putting the budget together this year. We're about um, just short of two months, or just short shy of two months spare to spare, right? Uh, again, uh, as Councilman Bittner said, y'all, uh, the employees of the city and, and the senior staff did a great job of. of working or, or, or doing more with less and it's reflected in uh, the lack of, of need to use fund balance last year and just the it, you saw the positions how they had been reduced uh, you know and we're working in a more efficient environment and a lot of that is due to the uh, hard work and determination of our employees and the other thing is uh, you know we are having to compete you know against all these other uh, entities here and our employees are valuable assets to our organization and that's what makes us what we are, what makes us work. So, I'd uh, like to add to Mayor, Mayor that um, this is probably one of the earliest budget adoption dates in recent history in the city and I attribute that to fellow council people for willing to donate, devote a sufficient time at every Tuesday for since heavens knows when, but also to the management and to the department heads who impressed me, and I hope you, in terms of their diligence in preparing a sound budget with odd frills reacting to the loss of revenues and, uh, and to the manager 
for leading us through these discussions in a very uh, deliberative but expedient manner. I'll go ahead and add a few comments too because okay. I was kind of surprised by the turn of events tonight when I thought we'd had the budget worked out with all our budget sessions. I certainly would want to say I appreciate the hard work that all the hard work and employees do for the city. But as far as competition, we are in competition in more ways than one, not just on hiring people and retaining people. We are losing the competition between ourselves and the rest of the county. I spoke to the director of Onwasa last week to get some numbers because as a water sewer liaison, I'm very cognizant of our numbers as far as households. While it's gratifying to see the growth, that we have a Krispy Kreme, that we've got a stretch of Western Boulevard that is expanding. You can see the new commercial facilities coming to town. The director of Onwasa told me that they are averaging 900 to 1,000 new accounts per year in the county. Our numbers are flat. We are not having residential growth. I'd ask the manager, do we have, we have 555 employees. Do we have, uh, we have turnover, we have vacancies throughout the year. Do we have 15% vacancy out of our 555 employees? I don't believe so, no sir. We have 15% vacancy in our residence. In other words, our staff needs to be prepared to do the work for 20% more citizens that we don't have. We all see it. Everybody lives on a street with empty homes that have been home for years and more years. Even upscale neighborhoods we were talking about with lower vacancy. So that's why I requested the CIP to push off anything that was related to growth. We might can see growth with our eyes, but we are not experiencing growth with our population. So you can compete on some levels, but you need to be aware of where you're at on the basic competition for customers. We are not gaining customers. That's why we're having to squeeze year after year. I said it before, say it till the cows come home. If you want less of something, make it more expensive. That's what we've done. We did it last year with last year's budget. We, I hear it from the developers with our UDO, some little things I had no idea. I don't know about rock or millimeters of vinyl, but they say that a house in Jacksonville, the only people building houses in Jacksonville are the ones that are basically given the land. And even then they can't really turn it out as well as they can in the county. So well, I'm glad the budget process is over. I'm still wary of our future because the, the recent past is probably going to be a pretty good indicator and I don't see any reason for it to change. So I guess it's just, I'm glad we're done with it, but it's a warning we, every day. We've got to be on, we've got to be looking to make it better to live in Jacksonville while it's not now. Thank you. Yes, sir. And, you know, I, <clears throat> I voted against the budget last year for, for the reasons that I stated last year in terms of employee raises while we were raising uh, taxes at the same time. But this year is quite a bit different in terms of what you just alluded to. The county is, is seeing some growth and, and Onwasa is, is seeing some very good fund balance and so obviously they're allowed to have much more money to work with but we're also in competition with these other entities we just lost a chemist to Onwasa one of our you know very important positions so I think the city leadership has done their job this year bringing a budget forward with almost every department coming in less 
we have less employees as was just indicated we are reducing we are reacting to the local economy and making the adjustments i believe that in this budget um, we've seen great examples of that and um, and having seen those examples we've adopted a budget with no rate increases and obviously very cognizant of of the future of growth and maybe the lack of growth as, as you're indicating but i think you know mr bittner's proposal on a one percent um, increase for for salaries is is well deserved in keeping in competition with our competitors you know we can't we can't invest in in positions and invest in educating and training and then losing those positions to our neighbors that's not very good business and so we we can't let the gap continue to get further and further in my opinion and that's why i voted for that uh this evening but in doing so i think we've shown enough uh reservation throughout all the departments uh that brought forward a budget that was in line with what what our expectations were and also a reduction of employees and positions that were not filled which equate to a lot of money over a period of a year so i think we're headed in the right direction as long as we keep that same attitude and and be aware of our local economy and our lack of growth and but i think at the same time we can't we can't lose reality and that we have great people in this city we have great employees that 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 represent our government each and every day and the reason that we give out the 15 and 20 year and 25 year and 30 year awards is because we build that base for them to be here that long and so i think we need to continue that because at the end of the day that's the service that we bring to our citizens and regardless whether we're experiencing growth or a decline where we have to make some some adjustments we still want our best foot forward and give our citizens the very best that we have to offer and i think that our city staff does that we have great employees and um, i don't want the gap to continue to get too far where people just have no choice but to leave because everyone's trying to feed their families and if the opportunity is greater just a short drive down the road then they have no choice but to make those adjustments and i think we need to stay competitive and i think it was the the, the right decision today uh, versus last year I think we've made the right leadership moves and therefore that's where the adjustment uh, decision was tonight for me thank you let's go on to the uh, last section of public comment for the evening is there anyone still wants to speak okay all right our next will be the reports and I'm going to start with Mr. Wharton no report, Mr. Mayor. Proud to be here. Thanks, sir. Uh, thank you. No report. Thank you. No report. Mr. Willingham. In December of 2014, the uh, President Obama announced $263 million in funding for body cameras for law enforcement. Uh, the 1st of May, um, the President announced an additional $20 million that is dedicated towards um, local government, small governments. I would like a, a workshop where we learn more about these programs and any possible benefits. Mr. Nothing further. Okay, thank, thank you. you. Mr. Bitter. On Wassa's meeting uh, later this month, third Thursday, fourth Thursday, to uh, work on their budget. The new treatment plant is in operation, and Civic Affairs is meeting this Thursday at noon, so I will have a report for you the following meeting. That's all. Okay. Thank you. Mayor Pro Tem Lazaro. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, Mr. Massey and I had the opportunity to attend the Mayor's Coalition meeting in Raleigh that was hosted by Mayor Nancy McFarland. Um, we had several presentations from uh, Senator Harry Brown, Senator Rucho, and others. <laughs> And we spent the day at our uh, legislature uh, walking the halls and, and, and doing the work of the city and, and the coalition. And we ended the evening uh, at a reception and dinner at the uh, 
at the governor's mansion, which was very nice. And um, so it was a very productive day, and uh, we appreciate the opportunity to, to represent the city. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Just a couple of things. Uh, I'll be attending and presenting a proclamation for the uh, National Day of Prayer on th Thursday, May 7th at the Freedom Fountain at 12 noon. Uh, you're certainly welcome to join me there uh, for that. And also on May 13th, that'll be a Wednesday at 10 a.m. at the uh, over by the Memorial Garden uh, at the pond over in the at Jacksonville Commons Recreation Center. We'll be having uh, the Peace Officers Memorial Observance. Uh, please, by all means, if you have the opportunity to, please join me for that. Thank you. Dr. Woodruff. Mr. Mayor, members of council, I'd like to ask Gail Maids if she would come forward and be recognized a moment. Gail. <laughs> it's with great pleasure that I announce that Gail Maids, Finance Director for the City of Jacksonville, graduated from the Municipal and County Administrative course offered by the UNC School of Governments on Friday, May the 1st. This resulted, or this is the result of approximately six months of intensive classwork. It included several weeks of, of on-campus training. The overall goal of it was to expand Gail's ability to overall manage the city. So I'd like to ask you to join me in congratulating her. Good job, Gail. Mr. Mayor, members of council, uh, I would also like to um, mention that the Jacksonville Jamboree occurred this past weekend. Most of you were able to get out uh, for that. We appreciate uh, Mr. Bittner's uh, great influence with the weather. Uh, it was his neighborhood and he did a great job. We would like to take just a moment to show you a video of some of the activities that occurred that day. Council, one other thing that I would like to mention, uh, many of you have asked about the Purple Heart uh, presentation that will actually occur tomorrow at the Freedom Fountain adjacent to City Hall. That's at 10.30 a.m. Congressman Jones will be here to present the Purple Heart to the uh, family of the recipient. Any of the public who would like to attend is certainly in uh, in invited to do so. As always, we appreciate the leadership that the Mayor and Council provide. We pledge to you a good year coming up. We will do everything we can to keep your expenses down while keeping your quality of services high. Thank you very much. All right, with that, uh, we'll uh, entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Thank you. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. Uh, aye.